السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته one of my memorable journeys as well is my first trip to Albania in December 1991 soon after I was obtaining my doctor of medicine certificate from the University of Birmingham Medical School Professor Birmingham this one 11 10th or 11th of December and I travel by the weekend actually about 14th or 15th of December We have to go to Albania, we have to go to Albania through Yugoslavia because it was border in Yugoslavia at the time and Yugoslavia was, was still one country before the war started in 1992. I traveled by Yugo Air, Yugoslavian airline to Belgrade and from Belgrade I took another flight to Skopje. Skopje is the capital of Macedonia. Macedonia was a part of Yugoslavia at that time. I met there uh, Mr. Adnan Ismaili, who was uh, uh, a local uh, volunteer uh, helping us to travel to Albania because he speaks, he speaks, he speak, uh, he speak, he speak Al- 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 Albanian as well as Arabic as well. And also with me was uh, Mr. Asad Taha, a journalist, freelance journalist working for a lot of Middle East. Uh, newspaper, one who was living in Yugoslavia and, and uh, in Germany, and he came to be because he has a specialist in uh, Balkan uh, history and Balkan conflict and so on. We traveled by Adnan's car, which I remember it was uh, Fiat, and we it was very cold. And uh, we had to stop before sunset on the mountain because there was no uh, mosques. So we have to stop on the mountain to when we found a mosque. But unfortunately, the mosque was closed, so we have to do the wudu. Uh, it was extremely cold, and now you can feel the pain and the agony of how to perform a good abolition, uh, especially in this uh, very cold weather. Three of us uh, made the abolition of the wudu and whilst we prayed on the stairs, the landing and the stairs, uh, Zuhr and the As before we entered uh, Tirana in the evening to go to the Tirana Hotel. We were guided by uh, our colleagues in UK uh, about to take all uh, our food with us. So we took a lot of biscuits, uh, chocolates, uh, canned beef, a lot of canned uh, food with us. And uh, because there was no market in the city, there's no food in the city. And we were asked actually not to, to keep our, uh, the, the, the doors of our room closed. <clears throat> uh, Albania was coming out uh, of this shrine of uh, uh, not socialism, communism, hardcore communism by the late Anwar Khoja who looked uh, uh, down the state or the nation for 40 years, no trouble, nothing, nobody, obvious was and others. And uh, this was Albania. Our focus was is to go to uh, register Islamic relief at that time. There was no administration apart from the court. And we submitted some papers through a lawyer and we managed to get the certificate of registration maybe uh, a week after that. Uh, while we were in the hotel, we wanted to change the food because there was no food to eat, just tea and bread. That's the only thing. Uh, we ha- I had one of those corned beef cans and we gave it to the uh, and the cook in the kitchen and telling him yes to put half of the meat in with, with about four eggs and bring them back to us cooked. Of course the man pretended that he did not uh, know English and he never, never returned back the rest of the canned beef in the can itself. Because there was no imported food coming uh, to them. One of the memorable stories that we had is we met the most senior prisoner uh, and hostage uh, by uh, Anwar Khoja regime 
and he stayed in prison for more than 40 years for trivial things which he could never be able to realize. And Asad Taha was doing interview with him because he always writing these stories in the Arab news paper to highlight the agony of the Muslims in this area. And after giving him lunch, respecting and giving him lunch in the hotel, he wanted to greet us because he knew that we are Muslims and he wanted to greet us. And on the, uh, before leaving us at the gate of the hotel, he was reciting something which none of us understood. I am and then some Arabic, Asad and Adnan. And he was crying and his body was shaking and was you know, trembling. And uh, when we asked him, what was what was what you saying? He said he was reciting Surah Al Fatih, and this is the only thing that his father taught him when he was a young kid in the school, maybe 60, 70 years ago. He would meet Allah with an, uh, a broken Arabic recited Fatiha of uh, of the Quran. So we greeted him and he went there. Actually, second uh, memorable uh, incident happened to us is uh, when we went to Friday prayer in the mosque. Uh, the mosque was half empty, but outside the mosque, people were standing in two lines. You see, those holy, holy, holy men, there was no women coming to the mosque. Holy men coming from heaven, coming from different planets, and wanted to go and pray Juma there. The people are very happy to be free, but they don't know how to perform the prayer. But actually, they want you to touch our head, they want to touch our children, they want to touch our hands as we are holy men. And this was the realization of how desperate those people wanted to regain their identity again. We met another uh, sweet character, which was Sheikh Sabri Kocha, the head of Islamic uh, Mashiach or Islamic organization in the country and he was a very committed he was also one of the people who had been put in jail for years and years and years because of his Islam and his stand for Islam actually at that uh, time and we wanted to help them to establish some humanitarian work in the uh, in the city uh, the the court which we went in it was like a room and full of people and like somebody sitting on a on, on a desk and everybody was smoking and you go there for a few minutes and you come out uh, all your uh, uh, you smell you smell the smoke uh, as well the code of dress at that time was very conservative not because they are muslims or they don't know anything about islam no because all the women are very hard working class citizens of the country, whether they're actually in the field or outside the field at home. So they were wearing head scarf or a cover, which is traditional, nothing to do with Islam. Then uh, skirt to the knees, and after underneath that, they were wearing uh, trousers as well. Uh, so Anwar Khoja, as the late president, he led them to live in a bubble in a big bubble and uh, made them to believe that they'll be attacked by people from the north and west and east and south. That's why he spent all his money or the budget or the, of the country on building these bunkers, bunkers, concrete bunkers, 400,000 bunkers. You can imagine how naive the people were, how uneducated, how isolated, food they were actually uh, to live to, 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 to let him to spend all this uh, money on these 400,000 bankers so so can each one of them can defend the invas the, 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 the invasion the, the invasion power of Italy and the other countries coming to them. This is how the Albanian lived at that time and we were one of the first few organizations landed in Albania at that time to start working in 1992 after getting the certificate from them. 
as a writer, he to drink coffee. And at that time, coffee, uh, the, the, what's the, cup? the Turkish coffee will cost one dollar. Very expensive. And he has to take a permission from me to give him this one dollar because he was working for us as a consultant and out or certain outside the, the daily rate at the time we have to put subsidy of one dollar or two dollars extra every day to buy the coffee for him. This is how we started the first trip. Very memorable, very memorable, very memorable trip. I wish that you were there with us, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.